Good morning, International Christian Fellowship, Rome, Italy, online, on campus. It's Pastor Jennifer here. It's summer and God is doing new things. It's a new season. And so today I want to say welcome. Welcome to the family. We love that so many have joined us online and now we're seeing them join us on campus. So I invite you today to lean into worship, to lean into the ministry of the word. For those of you that are traveling and you're working or you're on holiday, we don't go on holiday from Jesus. He's with us always. He's as close as the mention of his name. So as you enter into worship, I pray that you have a blessed Sunday. Thank you for joining us and know that the Lord has a great word for you today. Through the night, I've seen better days, and you've always been the same. I've been tried by fire and healed by your rain, and in every season, God, you are the same. This is where the glory is. You're the one I'm walking with This is where the glory is I'm never alone This is where the glory is Here and now until the end This is where the glory is Forever
the glory is I'm never alone And this is where the glory is Here and now until the end And this is where the glory is Forever and ever, amen Surrounded, but I'm surrounded 
dell'offerta e il tempo delle benedizioni. I, I will, I will vi do il benvenuto a tutti voi in questo culto quando diciamo che è tempo dell'offerta vuol dire che è anche il tempo delle benedizioni voglio darvi una testimonianza corta con un versetto non sottovalutare i vostri doni nel regno di Dio Because when I started, I had, I had no money to give God. But Perché I, quando ho iniziato non avevo dei soldi da dare al Signore. But, but as a young person, I gave my time, and my talent, and Ma my calling. Come persona avevo dato il mio tempo, il mio talento e anche la mia chiamata. So I believe each and everyone has time, have Quindi, 24 hours. So che tutti noi abbiamo il tempo. And we have calling in our lives. E tutti noi abbiamo la nostra chiamata nella nostra vita. So I would like to I would like to speak like examine your heart today. Voglio chiedervi di esaminare il vostro cuore oggi. I would like to uh, read from Romans 11:16. Voglio leggere dai Romani 11:16. So here God says, for if the fruit if the first fruit is be holy, the lump is also holy. Se il primo frutto è sacro, anche il anche il, uh, il frutto è sacro. Remaining is holy. Sorry. <laughs> It's fine. Okay. And if the root be holy, so the are the branches. Se le radici sono sacre, così sono anche il resto dell'albero. So I would I would like to say that God is telling if your first fruit in in your time in your talents in your money if you give the first fruit means 10% to god the rest 90% will god will take care of it quindi se voi date il vostro primo frutto la decima um, del, del, dei vostri frutti il signore si prenderà cura di voi so examine your hearts and don't let enemy steal your first fruit because e- god gave you the 100% so Esaminate il vostro cuore e non far sì che il nemico uh, prenda il, uh, il, uh, il vostro primo frutto. So, please give your first fruit to God and the rest will, God will take care of it. And enemy cannot steal your 90%. E perché poi se voi date questo, il Signore ci ha dato il 100% e sappiamo che il nemico non può togliere il 90% se date il vostro primo frutto. And I thank you everyone for Vi- giving to to the ICF Rome because of you the kingdom work is moving faster. Vi ringrazio a tutti e per le vostre donazioni perché grazie a voi il lavoro del Signore, il regno del Signore sta si sta muovendo. If you want envelopes at the back you can get envelopes. Se avete bisogno delle buste potete andare al centro del benvenuto per prenderle. So in ch- in our church we have three ways to give. Le nostra chiesa abbiamo tre modi per dare. In person you can give online and we can give in POS machine who wants to do a card. Di persona online e anche sul post. Oh, excuse me. Today the POS machine is not working but you can still give in online and uh, in person. Ah, scusate, allora ehm, potete dare in persona e online perché il POS non funziona oggi. Can you please all stand? Possiamo alzarci tutti e preghiamo. Before we pray. Prima di pregare. God, how can I what can I do for God? Prima di pregare chiediamo al Signore cosa posso farti, Signore. Let us pray. Thank you Father, thank you Jesus for the opportunity that you have given, Lord. Grazie Signore per l'opportunità che hai dato. Lord bless the tithes and offering which are the pe- your people are giving, Lord. Signore benedici le offerte e le decime che le, le persone daranno. You will bless the fruit of first giving that as you said, Lord, you will protect The 90% of our income. Signore, tu benedirai il primo frutto e tu proteggerai il resto dei nostri, eh, de, de, delle nostre risorse. Lord, I pray that you will give us a great fruit in this city, in this land, and you will bless your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Signore, prego che tu benedici tutte le persone in questo posto nel nome di Gesù. Amen. Amen. Please. Good morning, I see a Brown and Pastor Jennifer and i, as you can see, I am standing in a very old church. We are really blessed to have church on campus in Rome. 
church online around the world. And today I'm actually in Florence doing a Assemblies of God missionary retreat. And then Sunday, when we see this video, I'm going to be speaking in Albania. And so today I am so happy to introduce my area director of Southern Europe, Assemblies of God, Dr. Joe Sabo and his beautiful wife, Noemi. So I want you to lean into the message. I know he's got a rich word for each and every one of us, and I'll see you next week. Love you. Well, good morning, everybody. It is so good to be back at your church here in Rome. My wife and I were here about a year ago, a year and a few months. And so we are delighted to be back and share the word while we're in Italy. We were also at the retreat in Florence where Pastor Jennifer was. So greetings to you. Greetings to all of you who are watching online. And uh, we have an exciting message for you, I believe. And I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to read a few verses starting at verse 27. Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 27. Notice what is contained in this precious message from God to us. So Peter answered him, talking about Jesus, him is Jesus. We have left everything to follow you. What then for us? And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Now, here's what I want you to listen to and pay attention to. Verse 30, but many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Father God, we come before you this morning and we just say thank you for giving us the privilege of looking into your word and receiving this message from you, from your Holy Spirit directly to our hearts. And we pray that we will we'll have hearts to receive the word that you want to speak to us and that we'll be encouraged and strengthened, and that we'll be able to go out of this place ready to serve you another week in the world in which we live. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So one of the things that you learn after you are on earth for a while is that there are quite a few surprises in life. Is that, that's very true. I mean, when you're a child, you are probably really excited about your birthday, but if somebody throws a surprise party for you, your birthday is extra special. Uh, when you are a young woman and you're married and you find out for the first time that you're pregnant, that's a big surprise and you're all excited. When your boss gives you a raise or promotes you at your place of work, that's a really great surprise if you didn't see it coming, of course. And, you know, some people, once in a while, they receive an inheritance. Maybe they had a, an uncle or an aunt or a grandmother, and they left some money for you in their will, and you didn't know about it. Then all of a sudden you find out that you've got some big money coming to you. What a nice surprise that is. Well, Jesus is talking about a surprise. And he says that there's a time coming when rewards are given out, when we're with him, when we're gathered around him. And Jesus says, verse 30, but many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. I want to try and explain that to us today and hopefully gather some encouragement from these words. So you might be asking yourself the question, why did Jesus even say that? What led him to that that statement. Well, you got to understand if you read the context that Jesus in that same chapter, Matthew chapter 19, had just challenged a wealthy young man to leave everything and follow him. But he wouldn't do it. He loved his possessions, his money too much. And then Peter uh, and the other disciples with him, well, they were there and they witnessed that. And, you know, they had made some big sacrifices to follow Jesus. They had left their homes, their families, their businesses. And I'm sure it was exciting. I mean, after all, they were following the Messiah. 
They were watching miracles happen. They were discovering new things about God's will. I mean, the kingdom of God was advancing, so surely it was amazing to be with Jesus, but that does not take away the fact that they had made some big sacrifices. And, and then Peter he says, um, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? So that's what led to Jesus talking about the wonderful blessings that accompany the Christian life and eternal life. I mean, sometimes when you get to the point in your Christian walk a certain day and you say, I don't know if it's worth it. There's just too many difficulties, too many challenges to my faith. Somebody's mistreating me. Uh, I don't like what's going on in my life. And you sometimes, like Peter, might ask the question, what's in it for me? I've decided to follow you. I've left my country or I've left my old way of life. I left my big money, if you ever had big money. Uh, I, left, I left that boyfriend. I left that girlfriend because they weren't really walking in your ways. I made a lot of sacrifices. What's in it for me? Well, Jesus says everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields. I mean, that's just about everything, right? For my sake, we'll receive a hundred times as much. And in Mark's version of this, it says in this life. A hundred times as much in this life and receive eternal life. So, you know, we can make lots of sacrifices for the cause of Christ, and hopefully we will do it voluntarily, willingly, cheerfully. But let's not get into this negative way of thinking that says it's not worth it to follow Jesus or the sacrifice is too great. Jesus talked about multiplied blessings that come into our life. If you leave your father and mother to follow Jesus, guess what? The Lord's going to give you other fathers and mothers, adult figures who will love you like a son or daughter, and they will care for you and they will pray for you. You might leave your home wherever that was when you left it and you come to a new place and you're saying, well, I don't have a, a comfortable bed to sleep in anymore or I don't have my own house to live in anymore. But you know what? The Lord will give you a new room to sleep in, a new bed to sleep in, a new house to live in. The Lord will provide everything you need in abundance as you're following him. And then he says, and then there's eternal life. You inherit eternal life. What could be better than that? So that is what precedes Jesus' statement. Many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. So to be first in the kingdom of God is talking about having priority. It's talking about increased reward and recognition. To be first is to have priority. It's to have increased recognition and reward. To be last is to have less priority and to have less reward and recognition. So what is Jesus trying to say? First of all, let me just say it's a bit of a paradoxical statement. I mean, on first at first glance, it's a bit illogical. First, last, the last shall be first. But when you read a paradoxical statement in the Bible, just remember that it's not there to confuse you. It's to get you to think. It's to get you to ponder. It's to get you to pray. It's to get you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what Jesus is talking about. And this statement, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, is repeated in the New Testament. Jesus didn't just say it once. It's something that he was fond of saying. So, let me try and explain where this is going and what this statement is really all about. First of all, in God's kingdom, God himself knows who the real champions are. Think about that. In God's kingdom, there are some incredible people who are not working for recognition, who are not serving because they have a title. They love God, they love Jesus, they love following the Lord, and they're doing so in a way that is pleasing to God, regardless of whether they get some kind of big fancy recognition here on earth. They're just humbly serving God, and I submit to you that these are God's champions. I love what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 6 and verse 10. The Bible says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him 
as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Every time you minister to somebody, every time you say a kind word, every time you lift somebody's burden, every time you go out of your way to be a blessing to somebody else, God is taking note. He will not forget what you've done. He will not forget all the love and the kindness that you have shown people. Now, in the world, uh, being highly respected and, re and recognized as number one is pretty important. You can find advice in books and magazines and podcasts, how to get ahead, how to be influential, how to be a leader, how to make yourself visible, how to be more highly regarded, how to position yourself, how to arrive at the top, how to be the winner and not the loser. In the world, success depends on you. It depends on your attitude, your abilities, your position, and your determination. Now, I'm not saying that you mustn't ever think about what you have to do and how to get there, but you got to understand if you're following the Lord, your service is rendered unto him. It's not to be seen by people, and you're not doing it for the reward of human attention and somebody patting you on the back and somebody telling you how nice you are and what a good person you are and how helpful you are. You are serving the Lord, whether it's... Uh, worshiping on the worship team and leading people in praise and adoration to God, or it's working in the sound booth, or it's cleaning up the church once a week, or it's going out on the street and sharing the gospel. However God is leading you and whatever call you have on your life, it is not so you can receive human recognition. Although you probably will. Somebody's going to appreciate what you're doing. But the fact is you're, you're doing what you do for the Lord. Let me read you another scripture. 1 Corinthians Chapter 4, verses 2 through 5. Notice what Paul says in this passage. He said, now, it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. you got to understand that as you walk through life and as you serve God, the Lord is watching you, and he's not only watching what you do, and he's not only listening to what you say, he's also examining the intentions of your heart. And it really doesn't matter whether people like you or don't like you. I mean, we all want to be liked, I understand that. But in the kingdom of God, what's more important than human opinion about you is God's opinion about you. And that's why I tell you, I go back to that thought that in the kingdom of God, the Lord is the one who really knows who the champions are. The Lord knows those who are humbly serving him and doing so with a joyful heart. The Lord is the one who takes note of all of this and can reward you abundantly above all your, your, your wildest imagination. Let me share with you another thought. In the kingdom of God, there's going to be some pretty big surprises when the Lord recognizes and rewards his servants. I want to read a little bit from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Again, coming from the writings of Paul the Apostle. And 2 Corinthians is maybe my favorite letter of Paul because he's so personal, he's so transparent, he's so open. And he says, so we make it our goal to please him, the Lord whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. You know, one of these days, you're going to stand before the Lord. So will I. And he is going to reward us according to what we have done. And um, it seems, according to Jesus' statement, in Matthew, you know, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. It seems that there are going to be some people who are brought to the front of the line. And some people who were at the front of the line who are going to be made to stand farther back. Um, now, somebody here might say, well, what difference does it make where you stand in the line to get your reward? The main thing is that you're in heaven. Well, I agree. Of course, everybody who is in heaven is going to be happy. Everybody who is in heaven is going to be thankful for the blood of Jesus shed at the cross for their sins. Everybody in heaven is going to be uh, 
surrounded by only good things, happy things, marvelous things, wonderful things, and best of all, of course, we are with the Lord. But Jesus is trying to make a point. He's trying to make the point that what we do on earth has significance in heaven. What we do on earth is recognized by God and has an effect on our reward in heaven. And frankly, there are some people, and I don't know who they are, but I'm just saying there are some people that are going to be moved to the front of the line and some folks, in a, in a sense, who are going to be moved to a, a less important part of the line, if I can put it in human terms. How many of you guys like to stand in line? Yeah, uh, the other day we went to visit uh, the Vatican, because my wife had never been there, and it's, it's an interesting museum. And then we went into St. Peter's just to look, you know, because it's a big building and it's famous. So we stood in line in very hot weather. It was a lot quicker than I thought, but we were standing in line. It, it took about an hour to get into the church. Uh, but I've stood in other lines. I remember one time I was at an airport, I think it was in New York, and I was standing in line to buy a hot dog. So there was one hot dog stand in the airport. I forget which terminal. And I'll make a confession. I love a good hot dog. You know, you put it in a bun with ketchup and mustard and pickles and onions. And, oh, it's so good. I love a good hot dog. So I saw a hot dog stand and I said, I'm going to get a hot dog. And there was a big, long line. And, you know, there were some people, I'm sure, who were... Uh, needing to get to their gate, but they were also in line somewhere ahead of me, somewhere behind me. And right in front of me was an older lady, about 60, a grandmother, and she had a little boy, maybe about 9 or 10. And the lady was very frustrated, I could tell. She was complaining about everything. It's too hot in here. I don't understand why the airline forced me to lose that flight, and now I have to wait for another flight. And she went on and on just complaining about everything, not to me, but just in general, to her grandson, to everybody who would listen to her. Everything was going wrong for the poor lady that day. And she was saying how the, mis how the airline was mistreating her and why should she have to do this and why should she have to do that. And her little grandson, I assume it was her grandson, I don't think it was her own son. She was a little too old for that. But the little boy didn't look like he was having a bad time. No, he was watching the airplanes through the window and lots of people, and he was having a great time. He was not bothered by the same inconveniences that his grandmother was in, upset about. So we're standing in line, and I've been listening to this woman go on for about five minutes about how rotten the world is. And then somebody else comes to the hot dog stand and opens a second line. And I, you know, you know when you see that second, you just look. You know, maybe you're going to be able to get up front and you just look. You don't do anything. You just look. And, and she looked at me and she said, don't you dare. <laughs> she says, if you get ahead of me, I'm going to give it to you. I was shocked. Well, I just said a little prayer for the lady. And I didn't move. I stayed in line and we got our hot dogs and everything was okay. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's things that can happen when you stand in line that are not pleasant, like you can listen to people complain. Or you can get to the front of the line and then they tell you, oh, we are closing now. Or you can get to the front of the line and they can say, um, you're in the wrong line. Lots of things like that can happen and it can be a little bit discouraging. And you know, the Bible indicates that one of these days, uh, we're gonna be before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, exactly what that's going to look like, I have no idea. I, am, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it will not like be standing in a hot dog stand line. It will not be like that. But we're going to be around the throne. And maybe it, it, it will be that the Lord will call first those who he chooses to call first for recognition and reward. And there's going to be some people thinking, well, I was a deacon in the church back home. And uh, I, I loved telling the pastor what he had to do. And uh, I, I, I really enjoyed my position and my power, and people respected me in that church. And I suppose the Lord's going to call me here pretty soon. But he's waiting, and he's waiting, and he's waiting. And then the Lord says, uh, Susan, from 
Australia, I want you to come up here. And let's say Susan worked in a little church out in the, you know, a small town and no recognition, no books, no movies, no fancy write-ups about her life, but she just served God faithfully in the small things that God gave her to do. You know, she might be called up before the, the deacon or before the preacher or before the missionary. All I'm saying is I believe there's going to be some surprises when the first are last and the last are first. Like you have had the traveling, I have had the privilege to travel quite a bit over the years. And I have met Christians who have spent time in prison for their faith. I know one Vietnamese couple who was arrested and put in jail on their honeymoon because they were sharing the gospel. I know an Iranian woman who was put in a very violent and awful prison in Tehran for sharing her faith in Jesus Christ. I know others who have left prosperity and safety to live and work in dangerous places. You may not know their names. Their stories might not be on television. They may not be celebrities. They don't have a book. Movies will not be made about them. They just go about faithfully and obediently serving the Lord. But God knows who they are. In fact, the Bible says nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. And God has observed their faithfulness and their obedience and their sacrifice and their love for him. And he takes note of their service. One final thing I want to share, and that is God has ways of blessing and rewarding that go far beyond our own expectations. Let me read to you again from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Paul says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Did you see that? Nothing. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Not the smallest thing you do humbly and truly and uh, submittedly to the Lord is going to be forgotten. Um, I know that sometimes in the strain of life, uh, the challenges of life, we're, we're tempted, all of us at times, to, and we wonder if it's really going to be okay if it's worth it to go all out for Jesus. Well, I just want to share with you a few little pieces of advice that I think will help you. First of all, remember your call. Whatever God has called you to do, remember your talents and your gifts and the capacities that the Lord has given you. Whatever they are, don't forget the Lord has called you to do something for him. Don't forget the dream he may have dropped in your heart. I remember when I was 17 years of age, God called me to preach the gospel. Me. I mean, if you knew me back then, you would say, that young man will never preach. That young man will never amount to anything. That young man is a loser. Here I am. Been preaching for over 40 years. Still going. Still love the Lord. Still get excited about sharing from the word of God. Keep dreaming the dream that God has given you and serve without worrying about if you get credit or not. Just stay at it. Another bit of advice I would say to you is lay aside all the weights. The Christian life is a marathon. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 12, verse 1, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles so that you can run with perseverance the race that is marked out before you, before us. Um, you know, obviously Rome is full of ancient monuments. There's races, race, places where races were held. Greeks did that too. And you probably know that in the ancient days, a runner who was in a race ran absolutely naked. Why? Because they didn't want any kind of weight hindering him. And so he would run the race to get a little crown of olive leaves on his head. But he threw off everything that could hold him back. And even today, though, most runners, I've never seen a runner go naked, but uh, even today in the Olympics and important uh, events, the runner, no matter how good he is or how good she is, does not run with all kinds of extra heavy things 
uh, on his or her body. They try and become as light as possible. And champions do not get entangled with a lot of stuff. God's champions keep things simple. God's champions do not get entangled with worldly activities, worldly ways of thinking, worrying about riches, worrying about what people think. They run light. Stay unentangled. Throw off the weights that can hold you back. And then finally, I would just say, keep your eyes on Jesus. You want to end your life as a champion? Never take your eyes off of Jesus. Hebrews 12, again, let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. You know, we sang about it earlier today. The champion, Jesus, is the greatest of all champions. Think about that. He was no quitter. He ran his race. That meant leaving heaven, all the glory of heaven, the worship of the angels, the safety, the beauty. Jesus left it all to come to earth. And the Bible says he dwelt among us. He took upon hum himself human flesh. He took upon himself the form of a servant. And in the form of a human being, as a servant, he offered his life to die at the cross for our sins. And frankly, that is why each of us are here today. There is no other reason. He went to the cross for us. He gave his life for us. He finished the work that God the Father gave him to do. And because of that, we enjoy eternal life. So our Lord and Savior was no quitter. He was the ultimate champion. And the writer of Hebrews says, keep your eyes on him. Don't let anything get in between you and your vision of the Lord. And you will run your race and you will finish. And I don't know what spot in the lineup you will take when Jesus calls us all to stand before him, whether it's towards the front or towards the back. I just know that the encouragement from the word today is to be faithful. To work with all our heart unto the Lord and not unto men. To run that race, to keep our eyes on Jesus. And then one day we will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads for a moment? If you're here today and you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your own Lord and Savior, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm just talking about, do you know him? The disciples followed him. They knew him. And even though you don't see Jesus with your physical eyes, you can know him. And in fact, he wants you to know him. If that's you and you would like to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's not hard to do, honestly. You don't have to be a superstar to do it. You don't have to be famous to do it. In fact, you have to come humbly as a child. You have to admit that you've sinned against the Lord. You have to believe that he died on the cross for you and rose from the dead. That's about all there is to it. But if you do it sincerely, you leave death and corruption and sin and you enter into a new life with the Lord and you, for, you find forgiveness and you enter into a relationship with him that will last forever even after your physical body is no longer in existence your spirit will be so if that's you today and you would like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior I'm going to ask you to do a brave thing but would you do it would you just slip up your hand and say Pastor Joe I do need Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I want to commit to him today. If that's you, go ahead and raise your hand, and I would love to lead you in a prayer. Anybody at all? Just hold it up high so I can see it. I, I don't know everybody's hearts. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Okay. Anybody else? Would you say these words to the Lord? Let me just help you. God bless you. I see another hand. Would you just say these words to the Lord? Dear God in heaven, I am a needy person. I cannot change my own life. I cannot change my own life. And 
there are things that I have done and things that I have said that do not please you. There are things that I have done and things that I have said that do not please you. There are things that I have thought that do not please you. There are things that I have thought that do not please you. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. But Jesus, you came to die for sinners at the cross. But Jesus, you came to die for sinners at the cross. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. I don't understand all of this completely. I don't understand all of this completely. But I know that I want you. I know that I want you. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. And I want to be your humble servant. And I want to be your humble servant. I want eternal life. And I want eternal life. Most of all, I want to spend eternity with you. Most of all, I want to spend eternity with you. So forgive me, Lord. So forgive me, Lord. I am putting my trust in you. I'm putting my trust in you. Jesus, you who died at the cross. Jesus, you died at the cross. Rose from the dead. Rose from the dead. Please come into my life. Please come into my life. And transform me. And transform me. And give me the gift of eternal life. And give me the gift of eternal life. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give praise to the Lord. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, I want to encourage you by saying two things. First of all, congratulations. That is the most important thing you will ever do in your life. And keep following him. Don't stop today. Just keep doing it. And then secondly, talk to one of the leaders at this church, Pastor uh, Bose, one of the people on the platform, somebody that is a regular in this church, and tell them what you've done, and they will help you keep following after the Lord. And one final thing. Well, I wanted... isn't the word of God amazing? It's life giving. It's faith breathing. It's transpiring your destiny for this week. I want you to know that every time I make a video for you, I invite you to join me to agree together for what God wants to do in your life. So the first thing I want to do is say, you know what, maybe there's been some things in your life this week Maybe something in the message you listen to makes you realize, God, I need to give you a new commitment. Jesus, I need to trust you in a brand new way. Maybe he needs to redeem some things in your circumstance. I want to invite you right now to pray with me and to send me an email that you have prayed this prayer because I want you to know you're not going to do this faith journey alone. And he is going to help you do it in a brand new way. So agree with me and pray with me. After I pray, you pray, okay? Dear Lord Jesus, you say it. Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you. I invite you right now to take full authority in my life. Forgive me for anything that has taken me off course. Forgive me and help me to trust you in every way. Lord, from this day forward, for the rest of my days, I will keep holding your hand, holding on to your word, and trusting you with every detail of my life. Today, Jesus, you say it, today, Jesus, I belong to you, and I receive your love and your healing in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer with me. I want you to send us an email. I've got people that have been online that have walked into the church campus and said, that was me, and now I'm here and I need community of faith. So I also want to pray this prayer with you because I believe that your miracle is in motion. And I believe that in this summer, God is wanting to do something new in each of us. And our miracles are in motion. Our lives are in motion. We're in new seasons, but he hasn't walked away. He's walking right beside us. And so I want to pray with you for whatever you have need of. And I want you to know that when you write us, we are praying for you. You are not doing this life or this journey or this process alone. So Father, right now, I pray for your son and your daughter that are watching online on campus. I pray for the ones who are traveling. I pray for the ones who are moving to Rome and looking for that place to belong. I pray for the ones who are watching online and saying today, God, I needed a word from you. Let this be the word right now, Lord Jesus, that you're with your daughter, that you're with her family. God, let this be the word for your son 
that you have a calling on his life, that you're with him, that you're walking with him, that anointing and favor is upon him. And Lord, for that miracle in motion, whether it be physical or financial or relational, let your child of faith say, Lord, I will keep trusting you. So Father, I thank you for the miracle in motion. I thank you for the supernatural intervention in everything your child needs. And I pray that in this moment, faith would feel alive and fresh and we have a new outlook for the week ahead. I love you and I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So now I want to say, don't forget to write. Don't forget to join us online. Thank you for what you're doing to be a part of our global worldwide family. God is doing miracles and you're a part of it. I love you.